So for our sea turtles, these guys often come in for a large range of reasons, but something that we do see here, especially on Jekyll, where we have a lot of people coming and visiting, we actually will get turtles that have been accidentally caught on fish hooks. So here is a x-ray from a turtle that did have a hook in its throat. So typically these guys are looking for a free meal when they grab onto that hook. Sometimes they do swallow it. So sometimes they will come in and we do have to do surgery to remove it. Other times it's a simple pull out of the mouth. But something that we can all do to help our turtles, especially if you are fishing, there are certain baits that turtles like more than others, specifically shrimp and squid. So if you guys are fishermen or fisherwoman, just try switching to a different bait. Um, sometimes that is enough to help these guys from becoming caught on the line. But if you guys ever do see a turtle that is hooked on a line or on the beach, here in Georgia, you can call 1-800-2-SAVE-ME, and that will send you to the Department of Natural Resources, who will send a team out to help that turtle and bring that turtle here to us. So if you ever do find a turtle in Georgia, you know who to call. Our terrapins, we're actually gearing up for this season right now. Our terrapins are very susceptible to road mortality or getting hit by cars. So during the springtime and the summer between May and July, our diamondback terrapin, the females, are gonna come up out of the marsh looking for a place to lay her eggs. Now there's not a lot of dry ground in the marsh, however, all of the land that is next to the road of our causeway is a perfect habitat, it's high enough so that it doesn't flood. So our females will actually cross the causeway trying to find a spot, and during the busy summer it's very easy for them to get hit. So we do a lot of work with these guys. We do have a member of our staff who will drive up and down the causeway during this time looking for these females. Our goal is to help them before they get hit, but if we do find an injured terrapin, we can bring them back here, do our best to rehab them. But at the very least, we can incubate their eggs and then release their hatchlings out into the wild. So we do a lot of work with this species, but it is something to be alert for if you ever are visiting Jekyll between the months of May and July. Our box turtles are a little bit different. We actually have a picture of some pet food here. Box turtles, a lot of people think they make really great pets. And lots of people will find them in the wild and then bring them into their homes. However, turtles in general are not great pets. They require a lot of specialized care, specialized diet, and specialized lighting. So um, we don't recommend you keep any sort of wild animal as a pet, but our box turtles are really susceptible to being part of the pet trade because people bring them in, think they're real cute, and think that they're easy. But sometimes, if they don't know everything, it can cause some health issues down the road. So moving on to our threat for our sliders, it is very similar to our box turtles because it does involve the pet trait. People think these turtles are really cool, they really want to have them as pets, so there is a large demand for them. So people will actually go out into the wild, specifically looking for these turtles, collect them, and then try to sell them overseas. And they can get a lot of money for just one turtle, so it is a very tempting business um, however, it is decimating their populations out in the wild, so we don't want to take all of these guys or there will be none of them left. So our gopher tortoises are also facing some human-related disturbances. These guys are actually losing a lot of their habitat to development, so building houses, building shopping centers, and sometimes people don't know that these gopher tortoises are living here and they're social animals so they can live in a nice big group. So by losing that habitat, you're displacing a whole lot of animals out of their home. And that can make them more susceptible to getting hit by cars, having injuries, things like that. So development is a big threat for our gopher tortoises. All right guys, so our first animal friend is Phoebe. She is actually a gopher tortoise here. Look at her, and you can see a lot of very obvious characteristics that she is that gopher tortoise. You can get a close-up look of those wide, flat, scaled legs and those flat shovels. And you can also see just how domed her shell is as well. From the side here. Look at those legs. 
And these guys definitely look like older grandpas. Very gentle. All right, we're gonna say goodbye to BB. Thank you, BB, for joining us. Our next turtle friend is going to be Stripes, who is a yellow-bellied slider. Here we go. You can see some of those yellow patches on his head. And if he moves his front legs around, you might be able to see those super long nails that he has. These guys get their name from their very yellow plastron. However, sometimes they do have spots along that plastron and along their side as well. And you, you know, he's kind of hiding, but if he moves those back legs, you're definitely able to see some of that webbed footing that helps them to swim in the water. All right, thank you Stripes for joining us. All right, our next animal guest is going to be Mary Kevin, and Mary Kevin is a box turtle. While we have Eastern box turtles here at our center and on Jekyll Island, Mary Kevin is actually what we call a Florida box turtle. There's actually several different subspecies of box turtle. There's several in the US and then two in Mexico. And she does look a little bit different than our Eastern box turtles. If you look at her shell, she has almost like stripes, yellow stripes instead of the usual blotches or orange coloring like a Eastern box turtle would have. But hopefully you guys got a good look at her claws. There we go. She's a very good climber through the dirt and through the vegetation. And we'll move her up right here for a second so that you can see her plastron and that hinge that she uses to close up into her shell. All right, looks like she's ready to leave on her own. So we'll put her back. Thank you, Mary Kevin. Finally, we have our last animal, and that is going to be a diamondback terrapin called Minkus. She's one of my favorites. So here we go. Here she is. She has a really cool patterning on their skin. All diamondback terrapins have more of a grayish skin with blacker dots or markings on their skin. You can clearly see how these guys do have the web feet, they have the foot, they've got the claws. Especially her back ones, which she uses a lot for swimming. You can see some of the patterning and the rings that are on the shell that give this species its name. And moving around back to her head, you can clearly see she's got that wide, flat head and a very prominent beak. She loves fiddler crops. So she uses that very strong beak to eat those fiddler crabs as well. Well, thank you, Minkus. We'll finish up. All right, guys, just wanted to thank you guys for joining us at Squeak School to learn about all the different animals that we see here at the center and learn some of the differences between turtles, turpins, and tortoises. So again, thank you and have a totally terrific day.